Good evening, everyone, uh, and welcome to the Wednesday, May 5th, 2021 meeting of the Planning Dudley Plan Town of Dudley Planning Board. Uh, please note, if you will, that this meeting is being held in person in the Dudley Municipal Complex, 71 West Main Street in room 321A, Veterans Memorial Hall. We are in three, 315. Ah, I stand corrected. We are in 315. So again, making that uh, notice again, we are in room 315, third floor. Uh, this evening we have present member William LePage, member Stephen Watroba, member Guy Horn, and myself, Vice Chair Richard Clark. We have before us this evening three public hearings on proposed zoning amendments, the first of which is the petition of land over owner Darius Ochaki, and I hope I pronounced that name reasonably well, to rezone property at 115 Schofield Ave to Industrial 130. The property is currently zoned Industrial 43. The property is also known as, as Assessor's Map Number 124, Parcel 12. Uh, is there anyone here who is looking to speak to that? I'm, uh, I'm Mike Jobber, attorney for uh, Darius Ochaki. Okay, uh, sir, would you make sure that you sign in, please? He did. You got the sheet? Yep. Yeah, did, thank right. you. Thank you. Yes, I guess we're here for a uh, petition. My understanding is that um, this group uh, heard a presentation back in the fall for this very petition. I, I actually watched the video. Uh, this afternoon on it, uh, the meeting they held back on September 30th, I believe it was. Um, at that time, Michaela Mann made a presentation on behalf of uh, BIS Botanicals, and uh, she, she's in route. Uh, she called and said that she's currently stuck in traffic on 395. Um, but be as it may, uh, that's exactly what we're here for is a zoning change. We're petitioning to, um, for a recommendation from this board to have the property at 115 Schofield Ave change from a, a current zone district of Industrial 43 to Industrial 130. And is it, if I may, as I recall, uh, the intent was to establish a marijuana retail establishment is that the correct still the plan that's still the plan still the plan and maybe mr scanlon the planner if i may before uh, we get to the questions perhaps from the board the difference between industrial 130 and industrial 43 are essentially the uses permitted are essentially the same except the marijuana bylaw allows all marijuana establishments in industrial 130 but not industrial 43 Okay, so these but are both. Other, and the only other difference is the lot size. Lot size. So these Three are both acres in industrial 130 and one acre in industrial 43. Well, again, it's both industrial. Yes. As far as the zoning. Uh, so uses from the board? Uses are about the same. I believe that the lot size of this particular lot actually exceeds the uh, required size for a. Uh, it's about 4.4 acres, I think. Correct. All right. Any questions from the board for the uh, gentleman? Bill, didn't we refer to. Um, Town Council on this as far as spot zoning yes we did in fact Town Council uh, spoke to the to the question and decided that this was not spot zoning yep there that one there was a public benefit and two it didn't provide you know an exceptional benefit to just one property owner and it was not detrimental to the neighborhood because it's already zoned industrial so I think we already crossed that that hurdle mm -hmm. at least as far as council is concerned um, as far as I'm concerned, n nothing has changed from last time. I mean, I was, I didn't have a problem with it then. I don't have a problem with it now. Um, I do want to remind anybody who's curious about this property. This property abuts the old mill down there on Schofield Ave, which is in the Mill Overlay District. So um, that mill being in the Mill Overlay District actually qualifies as a location for marijuana uh, business, correct, Bill? Which, is that the Chase Mill? Yeah. 
Yes. No, 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 not no. the Chase Mill. No, no, down the, there, the uh, Steve, the, the old Stevens Mill. Mill. The old yes. Ardlock Pack Acres. Or they call it Packard Mill. Packard Mill, that's yes. it. I couldn't that, think of the name of it. That also is in an overlay district, the mm -hmm. Mill Overlay District. Correct. Yes. My, my point being is that <coughs> literally you could step across the property line from this property that we're talking about to that property and go from being able to do it to not being able to do it, which is right. an argument for why you might want to... <coughs> Rezone this. So, so not having, excuse me. So not having been on the last uh, on the board the last time this came up, um, I thought I thought it was said that at the last town meeting the board of selectmen asked this to be tabled. That's why, what, true. why was it asked to be tabled? Does anybody know? We, to the best of my knowledge, unless someone knows something that I'm not aware of, I, it was never explained as to why it was being tabled. That we was public. Got, we never got an answer to that either. No. Okay. That was. Yeah, I think there was that was kind of. I wouldn't want to speak to that officially. Okay, no. uh, do you Same know? Here. If, <laughs> do you know if your clients have have approached the board of selectmen and asked um, if they would? Ha what do they call the agreement that they make with host community agreement? Host. Yeah, ha have they en entered into anything like that with? Yeah, the my, my understanding was correct from wrong uh, that um, back in the fall the selectmen agreed to uh, move it uh, as an article on the warrant. No, he's he's asking as part of the Cannabis Control Commission regulations, whether Michaela has a code for selecting for a host community agreement? I don't know that. Okay. Yeah, I, don't know. <clears throat> okay. I think you would need this first before you would be likely to go forward with that. But <clears throat> in any event, I'm, I'm sorry, you said something about uh, the selectmen again. I, I didn't catch that. Well, ultimately, we need the selectmen to allow it to right. an article. And I thought that occurred. Um, that the article was tabled. At the last town meeting, mm -hmm. it, it never came to a vote. We were able at the, at the uh, town meeting, correct? Yes. But did the selectmen, the selectmen recommended it? Did they not? No. No, the selectmen. Oh, okay. I, I believe Mr. Sullivan, wasn't it? They actually asked that it be tabled. Yeah, be passed over. Yeah, I don't. I don't know why that was. And it, I, I understand it. In which case, all you need is a second. You don't even vote. They mentioned at Monday night selectmen's meeting that uh, what happened last time was the. Uh, landowner came the landowner tried to speak at town meeting yes. which was a whole because he's not from in town that yeah. became a whole issue one of the selectmen had a major problem with it that that got a little bit testy there so uh, I think at Monday night's meeting one of the selectmen mentioned that um, they would have to I guess vote to allow the person to speak is that how it works if you're from not from town, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah, I so don't think he'll be a, he'd be attending this anymore. Okay, all right. But just so you know, if he did feel like he was compelled yeah. to make an argument, that I guess rather than just rise, yeah. they even mentioned. I guess there's a rule that if you're not from in town, you're supposed to be down in that first yeah. only mm -hmm. rows. It's, it's like the right. Usually, there's a motion made to allow non-resident staff, such yeah. as myself, to speak at town meeting. So you you don't think he's going to be. I don't think he'll be at the town meeting. No. Okay. All right. No, I think I'll be there on his behalf. Okay. okay. Any further questions? No. All right. Uh, I assume that next our option would be to vote this. Yeah. So your your task is to make a recommendation mm -hmm. to town meeting whether you would support the article or not, okay. and, and then that would be right on the floor. All right. I would ask then what the board's wishes are. No, we're just going to continue the hearing. Yeah. So you want a motion to, uh, what's the what's the language I want to use here, Bill? To recommend adoption to town meeting or to not okay. recommend adoption. Okay, uh, so I make a motion that we recommend adoption of this article at town meeting regarding mm -hmm. uh, the property at 115 Schofield Ave. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? All right. I guess we will vote. Uh, we don't need a roll call vote, do we? No. No. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, the second of the proposed zoning amendments to amend the zoning bylaw and zoning map by creating a new district called or named 
Marijuana Cultivation Overlay District and by designating the property on Cor Corbin Road owned by Robert and Lynn Doherty to include in this district. Uh, do we have anyone who wishes to speak to that motion? I guess I can go over what we discussed last time. If we do that. Maybe a summation of that, perhaps. I, we have. Theoretically, we have an audience that's different from the one that uh, may have been with us the last time, and I'm not sure even whether we have the same <coughs> board constituted here or not. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not sure either because I think we did a couple of Zoom meetings. So yes, I don't we remember. Did. Um, um, Lynn Doherty and Robert Doherty, 175 Corbin Road. Um, we have. Um, Ask that the town consider uh, creating this overlay district to allow for farmers in town to do outdoor cannabis grows. Um, I guess at the meeting or after the meeting it was discussed as you know the size of the parcel or whatever but essentially we've grown on that property for the last two years. This will be our third year growing there. Um, started out as hemp, ended up as cannabis. However, it was just over the line, and we had really no issues. I mean, it's a very private parcel. Um, we're not going to have any issues as far as doing the um, security piece for it. And if we get approval from the town to grow in that district, in the new overlay district, um, we will approach the selectmen to do a community host agreement as well. Board, any questions for the authorities? Uh, yes, uh, through the chair, I'm just curious, when does your growing season normally start for this kind of a crop? Um, for us, it starts probably uh, early to mid-May. Okay. And then the crop that we're growing this year is going to be a very short season crop. But the latest that would go is probably mid to late September. And the reason being, outdoors you have to contend with mold, mildew, um, various things that are out there that you just don't want the plants to be exposed to. So the crop you're growing right now is hemp, correct? Yes. Okay. So is it actually possible if this were to pass that you could actually take that hemp crop forward and allow it to become the problem that you were having before essentially <laughs> where it was? We could. I mean, because it, essentially if it's going to be cannabis, it's going to be cannabis. Okay. And the only differentiation is um, they designate 0.3% or below THC, and that's total THC, Delta 9, um, okay. and the total THC content as opposed to just over 0.3%. And we actually had a crop last year that was 0.33, and it got burnt. Okay. <coughs> the reason why I bring this up, Mr. Chairman, is because I, I, on Monday night's selectmen's meeting, I listened to a discussion about this article. And, uh, is this the 20, meeting of the 26th? The, the selectmen's meeting? It was a subsequent meeting. I'm forgetting. Uh, the last one I viewed was the 26th. No, two nights April ago. 26th. Okay, then May, you're more May 3rd. You're more current. Thank you. Uh, the May 3rd meeting, this came up, and um, I think a couple of the selectmen, one in particular, had a real problem with the way that the article is written, written that it specifies this, this particular property in the article. Um, now, I, from my understanding from what town planner has told me is that if that property is not in the article then it creates a situation where we have to create the overlay district in the spring meeting and then they would have to wait until the fall meeting to come back to be asked for their property to place be placed into this overlay district is, is that correct well that's not the way the article is written so we we are accomplishing two two tasks here we are creating the district and then we are uh, asking that this particular property be placed in that district. But in one article. All in one article, correct. Right. So, and so I think that's where they have a problem with it. So. But we're, but we're essentially creating the overlay <coughs> district for this, for, the, for this property first. <coughs> and once the overlay district is created, any other property in town that meets the criteria could come forward and ask to join that overlay district but every single property after theirs would be, again, coming back to town meeting and getting voted on by the, by the residents. I, I understand that. But what I'm saying is you could also create 
the overlay district without having an initial property in it because we're doing that with the self-storage facility article. We're essentially creating a district you and we don't have a property to put in it yet. Correct. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> the other way would be on a case by case basis. Right. Right. And the reason the reason that I thought that the overlay district for the self storage would be good is because previous previously in Dudley uh, residential construction was allowed in the industrial areas so you have right now a lot you know we only have 10 percent of the land in Dudley is zoned for industrial if you take a look at the entire mm -hmm. zoning map so about 10 percent is set aside for industrial and a lot of that has already been built out in residential construction so if you had somebody come forward with one of these self-storage units and wanted to put it in a certain area if it happens to be in, a, in an area that's already, you know, developed as a neighborhood, some people may have issue with that. Sure. I didn't mean to jump us ahead to number three. Right. Well, uh, just, if I may, gentlemen, I, I think we have gotten a little bit ahead of ourselves. If we could maybe stay with the article with number two for a bit longer. Uh, I, I guess the question, if I may, Mr. Watroba, is what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Do we need the overlay district? And where do the, does this Corbin Road property fit in the sequence of mm -hmm. events? Well, you have to have the overlay district first, in order, right, in order for a property to be placed into it. So the way the zoning bylaw is currently worded, all marijuana uses are only allowed in Industrial 130. But the fact is that Dudley is a very agricultural community and has mm -hmm. a lot of big farms in town. Mm -hmm. And some of the farmers, such as the Doherty's, would like the opportunity to grow marijuana outside because it's a very lucrative crop. And we all know how difficult it is to make a living farming. It's a very <laughs> hard way of life. So, so they approached us with a, a question of how could a farmer s such as them mm -hmm. grow marijuana outdoors? And there are only two ways. You rezone it to Industrial 130, which doesn't make sense there, or you create this overlay district. So we came up with this overly just concept, and Guy is correct in that any time another farmer wants to come forward and grow marijuana outdoors who isn't in an industrial 130, they would need to get their property rezoned by town meeting. Okay. So each of them would be handled individually, and the town effectively would have some control over that process. The other control that we put in is a 15-acre minimum lot right. size. So you have to have at least 15 acres in order to be considered eligible for the overlay district. And if I may, to your point, as I understand it, I think in the Doherty's earlier presentations, they made it clear that you put something in the ground, there's no guarantee what you're going to get out of there, whether it's going to be hemp or marijuana. So apparently there's a good deal of uncertainty that's associated with this particular product. Uh, and also, for clarification, this is a tier seven that you're looking for, which is 50 to 60,000 square feet. That is the high end of what is allowed. Correct. I believe that's what the current zoning it does allows mean. for. <coughs> right. right. And I would just mention that that 50, 50 to 60,000 square feet is approximately an acre and a half. And in this new uh, overlay district bylaw, we're recommending 15 mm -hmm. acres as a minimum. So that's 10 times the size of what they would. So you'd have a grow plot of an acre and a half, but it would be on a, a farm, a minimum of 15, 15. 15 acres. So you'd have 10 times more land than you need to grow this. So it shouldn't be impacting the neighbors immediately. No. But none of that addresses the initial concern that I heard on Monday night from the selectmen about this particular property being tied in with the article. In other words, well, the way the article is presented, it almost appears as if the planning board's taking action for specifically just this one property. I, I understand mm -hmm. that the article will, that other people can come after that. Do these articles have numbers already? There, as I recall, on the, uh, the April 26 meeting, they were referring to articles as my number, but there was some uncertainty as the sequence. At least one of them was wrong in the sequence. I think Mr. Rudis' comment was to disregard one of them, 13 or 14 or which I don't recall. Uh, Mr. Wachow, I would ask, is there anyone here to speak for the planning board? We are the planning board. We are. No, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I meant to say. I apologize. Yes, I'm here. I, is there anyone here to speak for the Board of Selectmen? Apparently they have issue with this or concerns. I don't see anyone here to represent them at this time. Um, 
But we, we do have some citizens who would like to talk to the article. Oh, we do have other citizens who would like to speak to this issue? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. I'm sorry. I didn't realize mm -hmm. that. Uh, Siddharthi, are you anything further that you wanted to add or any um, questions for the board? <laughs> the only other thing that I would like to mention, and I just became aware of this myself um, two days ago, is that uh, Massachusetts Department of Agricultural Resources, or MDAR, has decided to allow on um, APR. APR, right. thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're going to allow marijuana as well as um, hemp growing on those properties. So that's something new. <laughs> Which properties are those? APR. So APR stands oh, for Agricultural, Agricultural Preservation Restriction, Restriction. Okay. Yeah. which is a voluntary program for landowners mm -hmm. to sell the development rights to the state. And prior to this change of heart, such farms were not eligible to grow cannabis. But now they can, so in fact, the board might see more requests to be placed into this overlay because now there are many more farms that would be eligible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, we just became aware of that. That was... Um, that's very new. <laughs> okay. um, Mr. Mr. Horn. Through the chair, um, to the town planner. So um, just listening to what Mr. Wotroba was saying earlier, if, if, if the Board of Selectmen, though not represented here tonight, does have a problem with this, is there any way we, with what we currently have written and advertised, is there any way we could split this into two separate articles for this town meeting, or would it not happen? Uh, I would say the article could be amended on the floor. So it could be split, in, in fact. You could vote on creating the overlay and then, um, you know, voting on the, this particular property. But I don't think we, we could amend it now. I think the warrant's been printed. It'd have to uh, be on the floor. Yes. Okay, so we'd have to, we'd have to notify the, we'd have to notify the, excuse me, we'd have to notify the Board of Selectmen, we'd have to notify the Town Moderator, and we'd have to get something written up probably by town council to make sure that they're all acceptable to it. Well, I, you know, it's what town meeting is for is to have that discussion on the floor, mm -hmm. so. Well, lem let me ask you this, uh, Bill. Um, if we leave it the way it is, what can the selectmen do? To get table. Well, I mean, you have to make a recommendation task tonight is to make a recommendation. You could recommend one or, or both, you know, of these points to be adopted, um, and then it would go to the floor with that recommendation, and then someone could make a motion to amend it on the floor. Uh, I also suggest, Mr. Planner, that I think they could table it as well as, they, as was the case with the previous article sure. last year. Mm -hmm. That's my concern, because if they, if they, if they, if I'm reading the tea leaves correctly based on Monday night's meeting, <coughs> they really don't like the way that this article stands right now because it has a specific property in it. Whereas if it was broken out into two articles, which is why I was asking if they had numbers yet, I don't know if they could have like a, if it was article 14, do they have a provision where you can have like an article 14A? No, you can, um, you can just amend it on the floor. Oh, okay. You can you can amend it on the floor. It doesn't have to have a specific article number. Okay. Maybe someone here more familiar with Robert's Rules of Order than I am, but as I understand it, a motion something can be tabled, but it can also be taken from the table. Mm -hmm. So uh, the last right. it can be reconsidered. Yes. Uh, so that would be an option in terms of if it were tabled, it could be it could be brought back. That has to be the same. The but same it would have to be voted back. Same time meeting though. Yes. Same meeting. I don't so know whether I guess, you know, one thing that the board has has to consider is whether this property is a suitable location mm -hmm. to be put in the overlay. You know, and as as Guy was mentioning, it's a, it's, a, it's only an acre and a half of marijuana cultivation right. on a parcel that's 150 acres. So, it, it, um, you know, it doesn't seem like it would have a negative impact on the Fif neighborhood. Fifteen acres. Fifteen acres. Fifteen. Yes, but this particular property. Fifty-five. Is 55. We have 55. Oh, you have 55 acres. Yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I, if I may, uh, and Mr. Wotroba, with all due respect to your reading of the tea leaves, I don't think we would know what the Board of Selectmen thoughts are on this until or unless it was presented. Okay, fine. 
No, no, I, 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 I may be wrong. Yeah. No, that's all right. <laughs> we could make a, if somebody wants to make a motion, we can uh, recommend the article as, as we it do stands. Have we do have other, have other uh, oh, that's folks right. here that would like to uh, weigh in on this subject. Yes, please. Okay, uh, could you step to the table, please? Sure. Did you guys sign the sheet? We can. <laughs> could you folks sign in when you're talking? Yes. Do we, do we have anybody else out there? Uh, is this, uh, I don't know whether people are holding back because they don't know <coughs> no. whether. No. no? Okay. Uh, my name is uh, Gian Renucci. This is my wife, Brianna Joseph. And we own uh, Dreamcatcher Farm at 52 Center Road. Uh, we own 11 and a half acres over at that property. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would like uh, to be um, either reconsidered for the overlay for it to be 10 acres um, or be a part of this overlay uh, because of, you know, a, a lot of points that I have here for you guys. If that could be possible to explain them to you? Sure. Or are you guys kind of 15 no. acres? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go you right ahead. Floor. All right. I mean, uh, uh, allowing only 15 acres is cutting out a lot of small farms. And uh, to utilize this new crop in this large booming industry, uh, a lot of full, uh, small farmers will be left out. Um, we've grown two successful hemp crops on our property, which means we've taken the plant from seed to a finished product and we've passed MDAR, not exceeding it to be marijuana. We know how to grow marijuana, we know how to grow hemp, we know what we're doing, we know how we've done it. We've been doing it for 15 years, traveling the country, we've lived in Colorado, we've lived in California, and uh, we have a lot of knowledge on the industry, working on cannabis farms uh, in these states, from seed to sale, we've worked at dispensaries, we've worked at uh, large outdoor cultivation facilities in uh, Pueblo, Colorado, um, and we know much about this industry. Um, our main reasons for asking for this is that our field is away from the public. It's down in a valley. No one can see it from the road. We have a large fence that blocks the road and we plan on putting a large six foot fence around the whole um, part of our parcel that we'd be growing the cannabis on. And uh, I think... Um, it is an acre and a half parcel that we grow on. Uh, the yeah. hemp that we cultivate on already is an acre and a half parcel that we already are approved with MDAR. That's yeah. where we grow our hemp down there to begin with. And also, un for, for you guys' knowledge, hemp can turn into marijuana under the state guidelines because of it being able to exceed 0.3% THC, but it is not the same plant. When you grow marijuana, I mean, it is the same plant, but when you grow marijuana, different cannabinoids are grown and the THC is a lot higher. So with growing marijuana, it would start at, you know, 0.3 when it was beginning to bloom, and then it would be in the, you know, 15 to 30% THC range by the time it was done with an outdoor cannabis grow. So it's not like you put hemp seeds in the ground and then wait for them to become hot, which is what they call it with MDAR. This is, you know, you're growing marijuana, so it's, it's gonna be marijuana the whole time. But our, our big point is Marijuana and hemp are the same thing. Someone driving past our field cannot tell the difference between mm -hmm. marijuana and hemp. It looks the same, it smells the same, it is the same exact thing. If I had a bag of marijuana and a bag of hemp right here, no one would be able to tell the difference. We own the CBD farm stand in Webster. If you go into our store, you can see the big jars of hemp. It looks just like marijuana. And a lot of people are not, not onto what hemp really is, but it is the exact same plant except no THC growth inside of it. Um, and with our field, we haven't had any sort of issues with um, <coughs> any sort of like theft or you know, people complaining about uh, smell or noise or anything like that. It's a pretty quiet crop. Uh, it's not something that's very loud and needs much labor. Uh, when you're doing an outdoor grow, it's pretty simple to do it. You don't need many guys, so there's not a lot of workers. There's not a lot of waste. Um, and I it think would give, being able to do marijuana would give us the extra profit to be able to hire more people. That's one of the main reasons why we want to do it, so we can build Create team more jobs and uh, bring more, more money into building. the town, because I know the, the town will also get some sort of a, a, a percentage of profits or something like that. And um, allowing 10 acres, I think, is still fair. I think 15 is, is just like kind of cutting out a lot of the small farmers that are in town that would love to be on this overlay as long as you know, the selectmen were, were for it. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry that was busy, but. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, any questions from the board? What's the size of your farm and acreage? I have 11 and a half acres. 
and I plan on trying to work with other farmers if I can't get in this 15 acre overlay. Um, I have a couple other farmers that want to grow hemp on their property with us and I would just say let's do cannabis instead. But I'd like to be able to, to have it so all these small farmers can make you know, really good profits where their corn fields and their hay fields where they're used to making 17,000 a year off of can now you know, make a, a really good living and also provide a lot of jobs because as you can see with the cannabis dispensaries popping up everywhere, there's a high demand for the product. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's you know, a lot of money to be made and, and jobs to be created. Any other members, questions? Uh, to the planner, where did the 15 acre come into play? Uh, when we talked about this at a previous meeting, I believe it was Guy who suggested a minimum we just, we just acreage picked, requirement. We just picked 10 times the size of the, the, of the grow lot. So it was, it was just arbitrary. And I, not to interrupt, can we do 10 times the size of the grow lot? as the overlay, because I think that would be fair. And we won't, we would only grow uh, less than an acre because it would be 10 times our property. I think that would be fair for smaller farmers as well. And as long as obviously it passes the town hall with the selectmen and security and there's, there's a lot, we've actually already contacted the Cannabis Control Commission. So we're fully aware on how to get a license, when to get a license, what we need to get a license. We have lawyers on board, uh, we're fully ready and, and uh, very knowledgeable about what we need to do and there is no acreage uh, minimum through the Cannabis Control Commission so they're ready for any lot size to grow. As I recall, and please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, there was concern that uh, we, we felt the need to set something in terms of a, a number, if you will. And I think that might have had uh, from the distinguished gentleman on my right the term slippery slope uh, if, if we got into the two and a half acre lot and somebody wanted to grow marijuana or something else even less than that and where was this going to go uh, it would be literally everywhere and anywhere uh, so, so there was a need I, I think our feeling was we had to set some number and uh, the, the, the 15 there was no magic Moses didn't come down with that as number 11 uh, of course we came up with that but maybe what sorry but maybe what he was suggesting, like we, we went 10 times the size of what we thought was the largest allowable lot is 60,000 square feet, which is approximately an acre and a half. We could, we could change the wording, ask for an amendment on the floor for the wording, instead of saying 15 acres that we say um, one tenth. No, no that they need the, 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 the grow the, area not to exceed one tenth of the yes. total acreage of the lot. Well, a 10 plus acre the, lot. The difficulty yes. is when you have a request to rezone a particular property, how are you going to decide whether that property is big enough to to get into the district? You, you if you make that if you make that qualification that the maximum grow area is one tenth of the total acreage of the lot, somebody comes before us and says, "I have a three acre lot. I would like to grow." I would like to be placed into this district. Then we say to them, okay, you can grow on only one tenth of three acres, at which point it should be economically not even feasible for them to go nothing, through yeah. the process of licensing. That would basically that would basically be that would basically be a, a, a household of two people with their twelve plants. Twelve plants. Exactly. That would be the maximum. I mean, there's a very stringent requirements through the Cannabis Control Commission to get, get licensed. Um, so, so a small amount of area for growing isn't going to be feasible to go through that whole process. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and I'm assuming, sorry, I'm assuming that to go through the Cannabis Control Commission and get licensed, it, it, it has some cost to it. Oh, it's very pricey. Okay. It's very timely. Time Ta timely, too. pricey. I don't, if we started tomorrow, I mean, obviously the town would be our first hurdle. But after that, it would still take at least a year or two to, to get a license. And then you have to get a host, agree a host agreement through the board selectmen. Host and, agreement and, and then to, to follow uh, their protocols on what they come out for, uh, you know, site inspections and things like that, it probably would take another year. It'd be a, probably a three-year process from from this point today, if, you know. If and so honestly, we did 10 full acres of hemp last year, so we had a 10 acres of planted pretty much marijuana. So we'll be going from that, our neighbors looking at all that, smelling all that, processing all that, 
down to an acre. It would almost yeah. be less of a nuisance for our neighborhood. Because we, when we grow hemp, we can grow as much as we want. Yeah, yeah, there's, no, there's no uh, restrictions on acreage. Last year we did our whole, our whole front field, our whole back field. Uh, we grew like 13,000 plants. If we were to grow on one acre of marijuana, we would only grow 1,000 plants. And you would grow just marijuana and not the combination of both? Yeah, the, the profits that, are higher. I, so did you grow. mention that you would be hiring additional personnel in order to, pro to, to do this? Um, you know, I mean, I would definitely have a few guys, but I'm saying it wouldn't take, like, you wouldn't have, you know, a, a team of 15. It would maybe be like five. So well, is the cultivation of marijuana more labor intensive than that of hemp? No, it's the same exact thing. We so currently employ about six people. To currently employ about 15 six. people on harvest time, six during the regular season. So growing a smaller area, you would still employ the same number of six? It takes a lot more, like, because you want a better finished quality product for the smokable product, so it takes a lot more, like, hands-on work, a lot more tedious yes. stuff. Yeah, so it is really more labor-intensive. It's, oh, yeah, it's just different kind of yeah. labor, yeah. I mean, you can grow, you can grow for two different ways. You can grow for, like, a, an extraction, which would be you would just grow it, and then someone would come in and buy it, and they would extract it all. Or you can grow for a finished product, and that would be, like, the bud you would actually get that's trimmed up, mm -hmm. and you would smoke. So that would be the difference in if you're going to be labor-intensive, versus if you're just going to grow it and then it throw it in super sacks and sell it to the dispensary. <coughs> Any further questions from the board? Um, not sure where we are with this bill, other than it looks like another issue possibly amended at the town meeting. Well, I think you can accomplish a lot with your recommendation. So mm -hmm. you can recommend that this 15 acre minimum lot size be changed to what guy suggested, you know, one tenth. Or, or I think Mrs. I think no, that gave Mr. Okay. Wachovia's suggestion. Or and or uh, to do whatever you desire with the Doherty's property. All right. And what we have in front of us does not designate any specific area. It, it does. The it wording does, of what we see here. It says 15 acres, minimum. Oh, further on. Okay. I'm just right. looking at the cover of the agenda. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, what is the board's wish? Could I uh, just take a recess for one second? Sure. Right. You found us. Did. Yes, <laughs> we, we, we tried to hide between a phony room number oh, earlier, no. it won't work. <laughs> oh, I don't think they'd ever turn us loose on the first one. <laughs> hmm. We're just adjourned for a moment, Mr. Horn. We'll be with us shortly. Mr. Murray, you found us as well. Okay. We're still on the zoning amendments, so it'll be a little off. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, Mr. Horn, thank you for your turn. Uh, all right. <coughs> Any, anyone care to uh, make a motion with regards to the second of our two proposed zoning amendments? Before we do that, could I ask a question? Sure. Um, I'm sorry. Um, 
the Board of Selectmen are going to have a meeting before the town meeting, is that correct? Yes. So we could, we could approach them at their meeting and ask for their input then? And if they wanted to re-, re uh, Well, so you could continue the hearing if you wanted to. You are meeting next week mm -hmm. on the 12th, which is before the town meeting on the 24th. Right. Now, what's the cutoff, Michelle, if I may, for the uh, warrants, though? I mean, they, you have to go to press at some point. Is it the 9th that I hear somewhere along the way? May? No? Or was that too early? That's not a bad idea. Your, your thought is continue it and talk to the Board of Selectmen beforehand. Are they meeting yeah, next week? The 14th. The 14th? Yeah, seven days prior. All right, and they meet again on the... When's the next scheduled meeting for the Board of Selectmen? It's obvious to everyone that Michelle is the, the only one that knows when things are happening. <laughs> right here. The 17th. The 17th. So they don't meet again until after the warrant needs to be posted. Right. And after the planning board meeting next week. Yeah. They met last night. They met last night. They met Monday night. Right. They've done a series of meetings. Mm -hmm. All right. So our only option then would be on the floor. So you mean you could still endorse it talk about it next week if you wanted to but you because wouldn't have met with the selectmen no we could make a recommendation do you want to just think about it some more and take it up again at the next meeting I, I'm just looking around hoping that someone's going to raise their hand <laughs> and lower their mask <laughs> and, and have some words of wisdom to share with us here yeah. uh, I, I guess the, at this point I would ask what the board's pleasure is uh, the options seem to be we could uh, table this for the time being to be re reconsidered at our next meeting uh, if that and gives then maybe us we could get maybe mr. Watroba saw the meeting uh, you, so obviously you know the one selectman that has the issue maybe we can talk to him individually and see what he has to say yeah I mean I could uh, I could reach out and uh, get some input because I really hate to see the <coughs> I'd hate to see us we bring it forward at town meeting mm -hmm. only to have them table it. Table table. it. Uh, point well taken. Uh, that sounds like a reasonable course of action. The other option obviously would be for each of us to take a look at that uh, recorded meeting of the selectmen and see, you know, get kind of a first hand assessment as to what's there. I don't, not uh, disputing anything that Mr. Wittrober right. recalls yeah. at the meeting, but. Uh, at least to get a, a, a better sense individually of what was said there and how are that was worded. Are yeah. the meetings still on YouTube or are they just on the old? No, YouTube. YouTube. YouTube? Okay. Yeah. The, the, the Monday one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That one's from the 3rd, May 3rd? Yeah, May 3rd. <laughs> May 3rd meeting. They talked about all of these zoning articles. Right. Uh, so. so I think there'd be a, a motion in order to continue the hearing on this article to the okay, next meeting. Okay, then. Did someone care to make that motion then? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we... Um, continue the public hearing on the uh, marijuana cultivation overlay district article until our next um, regularly scheduled meeting which will be on May the 12th. 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 Sorry. Uh, motion made. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? All right. We'll proceed to vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, folks, we appreciate your interest. Uh, we appreciate your taking the time to come in and present your case to us. Uh, the Doherty's uh, repeat offenders as far as that's concerned. Uh, I'm sorry to say that we have not reached a conclusion at this point, but uh, we do have what you have presented under consideration, and I'm sure we'll discuss this matter further at the next meeting, and you are, of course, invited to attend if you choose to do so. And when is that? That'd be the 12th. Okay, 12th of May at 7. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. I don't know which room we're going to be in, though. <laughs> <laughs> On the third floor. You, know, you might have to look for us a bit. Okay, moving along to number three. We'll amend the zoning bylaw and the zoning map by creating a new district named Cell Service Storage Facilities Overlay District, which will overlay all industrial zone zoning districts to add a new definition for the use and to set reasonable standards to regulate the use. And do we have anyone in attendance who cares to speak to that motion? I'm 
if you'd like, I could. Bill, I could talk if you have something it. you'd like to add. <laughs> sure. So, um, the planning board identified a need that uh, the town does not allow self service storage facilities anywhere in the community. And I think the board felt that it's a fairly reasonable use to allow somewhere that there's a need for people to be able to store their their supplies and equipment and household items uh, someplace in town. Uh, these are very common uh, types of uses. Um, they're very um, uh, modest in, in, you know, in size and height. They don't have much of a traffic impact. Um, so the board decided that it would, it would be a reasonable thing to allow these under controlled conditions. And the approach that we came up with is to create an overlay district, um, which would overlay the industrial zones in town. So th that includes uh, Industrial 43, Industrial 130, Light Industrial 43, and Light Industrial 87. So this creates an overlay district, but doesn't actually put any property into it. Mm -hmm. So if uh, an applicant wanted to uh, start a self-service storage facility in town, they would need to go to town meeting to have the property rezoned. And according to this bylaw, it would require a special permit from the planning board once the property was in the district. So there's a multiple levels of control here in terms of town meeting first, and then the planning board who has a great deal of authority under the special permit process to review and, and modify proposals. And then we have a number of regulations that we're proposing to further make sure that these uh, activities uh, are, are done properly and don't have impacts on the neighborhood. So we're requiring parking at the rate of one space for every 100 storage cubicles or a fraction thereof located near the leasing office. Minimum of four spaces should be provided and one space would have to conform to ADA accessibility standards. Two, when located adjacent to a property in residential use or to a residential district, the site plan shall provide a 50-foot landscaped buffer with evergreen plantings to serve as a visual screen from residences. Three, the site plan shall provide a 10-foot wide green strip along the frontage on the applicant's property planted with salt-tolerant shrubs and trees. Four, the site plan shall contain a narrative of the location and methods of loading, trash disposal, recycling, in the procedure for drop off and pick up, so the board would be able to review that and make sure that it's it's done properly. Five trash dumpsters, mechanical equipment, etc., shall be screened by solid walls, minimum of six feet high, and sited away from residential properties that reduces visibility and noise intrusion. And finally, the planning board may require mitigation of any negative aesthetic impacts that might result from lighting or other security measures. So in to total, I think there's some pretty tight restrictions here and would result in, I think, a pretty nice facility for the town if they can make it through this process. Mm -hmm. Any comments or discussion? You know, Mr. Chairman, I would just like to reiterate what the town planner just said because there is a misconception that self-storage units are currently allowed in certain zones in the town. I think part of that misconception comes from the fact that we have one mm -hmm. in town that exists. But I know when we talked about this way back when, that we all agreed that there's kind of a, a problem here. That there, there, is no, there is no zone in town currently where this is a, uh, a, allowed. And so effectively, you've got anybody who wanted to put one of these in anywhere mm -hmm. can't come into town and do it. So that's, I just wanted to make that clear. And to that point, this is the first attempt at trying to regulate this particular activity, if you will, in town. Whereas what you mentioned earlier apparently happened without any prior regulation. But, hmm. and, and some years ago as well. Hmm. Yeah, they're basically, they're grandfathered in for yeah. lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. But and going no forward, somebody yes. might end up wanting to do one of these businesses and we should we should have the regulations in place to properly deal with it. All right, any other discussion or questions? All right, uh, do we have any action that the board would like to take in terms of going forward with this particular proposal? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we um, 
recommend acceptance of the self-service self storage facility overlay district at the uh, next town meeting. Motion Second. made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you, gentlemen. And next order of business, if I may. Discussion with the Highway Superintendent on construction of the Lions Estate Subdivision. And we uh, believe that behind that mask back there, Mr. Murray. <laughs> Mr. Murray wanted to approach the mic. The agenda right, item reads discussion with the superintendent, Highway <coughs> Superintendent. So we'll allow you the option of using the mic and not having to shout at us. Okay. Uh, so I guess uh, in reviewing what the action was, there was uh, some type of planning action uh, uh, after the expiration of the original planning review and approval of uh, Lions Estate. And there was a recommendation by one of the board members to uh, use a super paved material for, for the binder course. And I'd have some concern with doing that, um, given the fact that it's a uh, much lower asphalt content in the, uh, in the super pave. It's not something that uh, the town would curr currently be using for, for paving projects. And, um, uh, also, the uh, right now that the town standard would be a, a two inch binder, two inch top, uh, which I don't so much have a problem with uh, changing to a two and a half inch uh, course, but I I don't think the uh, super pave binder would be the the appropriate thing to use, given the fact that <coughs> it will sit open to the weather for several years or uh, you know possibly an indeterminate amount of time, um, which is uh, common with a with a subdivision prior to the top course of paving being put on. Any comments, questions from the board? Jeff, can you explain no? what super pave is and how it's different from conventional asphalt? So basically the, uh, the super pave is a much different process altogether with uh, they're actually uh, <coughs> given, given thicknesses of pavement that they're using uh, there's actually different aggregate aggregate sizes. There's much there's a much lower um, asphalt content. I I want to say it depends on the depends on the actual material or whether it's binder or, or top. But it's in the four and a half to five percent uh, asphalt content range, where a uh, a typical type I uh, asphalt would be in. I think it's around nine or ten. So. Um, the, the surface isn't sealed as much when they when they place the uh, the asphalt it's actually even placed in a different manner they it had, they have to travel at a particular speed mm -hmm. they're actually rolling the rolling the material uh, to the point where it's they're actually fracturing the the aggregate in the in the pavement materials uh, to achieve the um, the type of uh, they're actually they're they're looking for air space in the in the material and at at this point I guess it's you know they move they're moving towards that more and more with uh, highway type projects but again if it was going to be placed with the uh, binder and then the top course consecutively uh, I might have a little bit different of opinion but uh, given right. the fact that it's going to be binder sit for a number of years while the uh, homes are constructed and then the top cost place later on. It's, uh, it's kind of a different. So if I may, if no one else has a question. So your concern is the length of time between applications? Uh, yeah, it's kind of a combination. It's the length of time in between and it's actually the, you know, the type of material right. as well. So what, what is the Department of Transportation recommendation? That, that, is, is that what you referred to in terms of the highway? Well, again, so the, the state is moving more towards a, uh, a super pave with highway construction projects. And, uh, you know, there's uh, different schools of thought as far as that's concerned. They, um, you know, it's a, if it's a, an area that's prone to rutting, you know, because there's a lower asphalt content, um, you know, I guess the, the idea is that it's less prone to rutting or distorting with... Um, with uh, heavy heavy traffic loads or highway highway the loads. The super pave, you mean? With the super pave, yeah. Okay. 
Um, so, and I, I, I'm sure people have seen in a lot of areas where there's uh, uh, also failures in the wear, wear course and some of the highways that they've recently paved. There, it's actually it's actually placed at a at a uh, somewhat cooler temperature than <coughs> the uh, traditional paving as well. Mr. Chairman, uh, yes, Mr. 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 Another question: How old is this process, super paved? Is it relatively new? Um, I mean, compared to like the old way, it's not. It's not altogether new. I mean, they've they've done uh, the problem. One of the biggest problems that I have with it, it, it seems as though it's it's kind of fluid. They've made changes to it as it as it goes along. Or they've, in, in my opinion, I think it's still somewhat uh, in the uh, infancy or experimental per, uh, phase. You, like I said, you'll see somewhere in. In some hi highway projects where there's some failures that have happened with the wear co course because of, uh, you know, for any number of reasons where it hasn't adhered to the binder. Uh, um, but as, um, as far as the conventional paving goes, you would support if the planning board wanted to move forward with changing the regulations to require a thicker course? Is that what I heard you say, two and a half? Yeah, I, I, again, I wouldn't be altogether against using a uh, two and a half. And it's somewhat typical that um, you would place a two and a half inch binder in, a, in an inch and a half top course of paving, and uh, that's that's uh, not altogether un, uh, uncommon. Uh, it just so happens that the uh, the current uh, town standard would be a two inch binder, two inch top course. Okay, but the two and a half inch binder that gives you a stronger road that's being traveled on by the construction equipment and everything going mm -hmm. in now. That would be the theory behind that. Okay, all right. Would that be a recommendation as opposed to just a theory? Uh, I mean, again, I wouldn't be against doing that, but currently. Would you be for it, sir? <laughs> well, cur again, currently the, uh, the town standard is two and two. Right. So, right. Um, well, well, what, what we're talking about is since you're here. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about sure. Down the road I, I would be in, if I'd be in support of uh, making a change to two and a half inches. We wanted to amend it. So I have a question about two other things that came up at that meeting um, that were agreed to by Mr. Ravain, and I want to get your thoughts on it. Uh, the granite curbing, as opposed to uh, what is it? Yeah, so currently uh, my understanding is it's uh, not something that that actually exists in the town standards with the, the granite curbing correct but we uh, requested it because we were convinced that that granite was more durable that seems like a no-brainer that granite is more durable than an asphalt berm and it was agreed to and mr. Ravain has agreed to to go forward with that, so if you don't have a, if you don't have direct opposition to it right now, we, we would still like to see that in there. But I'd also I, like to I, know I, whether excuse or not me, Mr. Wittroba. Okay, I, 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 I have to take issue with that. I think that issue was settled in uh, with our last meeting. I don't know whether we're going to gain anything by revisiting that at this point. I think, and my understanding was that we were inviting this highway superintendent to address us with regards to specific concern that the contractor had with regards to paving. Sure, but if you and, know, and, two and, weeks from and, now, and, if I may, please. Okay. Uh, is that correct, or am I? That uh, correct. Okay. So the granite was not an issue that you were aware of in terms of anything that was going to be discussed this evening. Is that correct? Uh, I, I wouldn't have any concern with uh, granite being used. In but you didn't place. anticipate that being part of the conversation. Um, so well, I can't ask. No, you can ask, but I do, I I do well, think. Well, me off at the kneecaps here. <laughs> well, I'm trying to get you a little lower than that, my friend. But uh, I think the, the issue has been addressed. I, I think we went through it in great detail at our last meeting when it was last given consideration. I don't know that we're going to gain a whole lot by going backwards. I think we were here, I believe, we were here to move forward with the issue that the immediate concern was in terms of the paving. Right. I didn't agree that I wanted to have the, the granite. By no means would I want to spend the extra money because of the town regulations. It was brought in in the 11th hour, and unfortunately, I wasn't at the planning board meeting to to oppose that, which I would have. If I was in that meeting when they when they that was suggested by Lou, I would have said, "No, it's not a town regulation. Why you can't just throw this in because you want it 
And if you agree that it's a good product, which I agree, it, it's it's still an expense that we have we have to occur because it was an opinion. If it's a town regs, it's great. We would have put it in originally. Okay, uh, town regs aside, if I may, and, and with all due respect to Mr. Wachowski's knees, uh, we did discuss that. Right. It was agreed to. Right. Okay. I, I didn't have a choice. It, it, well. It was something agreed to previous right. to your involvement, as I understand. Correct. Is that the case? Yep. Okay. So you are, I think, bound by what was agreed to, yep. whether you disagree with it currently or not. Right. Now, Mr. Wittrober, if you care to ask a question or continue, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're so right. the, the, third, the third item was the... Um, uh, it was brought to our attention that uh, when you're doing a, uh, a, a cut into the asphalt on an existing roadway to put the utilities in that it's better to have that section of asphalt that's cut out mm -hmm. be the full width of the road yeah. as opposed to just putting in a s narrow section just for the pipe correct you, you we agreed on that and i did agree that that was present part of the thing sure i was after the meeting last week i did go up and look at lion street that road is cut up all up and down that entire road that's i mean there's this so we're going to put a, a section of road that we're going to, we have to cut out and make perfect in front of the subdivision when the rest of the road sure. has the whole the road split down the middle they yep. put a line down it looks like a gas line going or whatever was put in all yep. the way down the middle so that's a whole different section and mr ravine i'm not saying that yeah. you're not agreeing with us on that i, no, I do no, recall I mean, that what i'm saying again. now is that we have the highway superintendent yeah. in front of us right now so this is my perfect opportunity yeah. to ask him if this is an amendment to the subdivision regs that he would support i would prefer not to have to do that i wasn't there to do it i mean i i didn't talk to jeff about that so you'd rather do just a little narrow only little because the rest of the whole road is like that and eventually i think you guys are going to grind that whole road down but we have to start it. somewhere it's yeah, kind of like when we talk about side admitted we have to start somewhere with right this. and if if we go by what mistakes have been made in the past and continue to perpetuate those it, mistakes going not, forward we're not doing anybody any good right. and i believe the question was addressed to mr murray sir okay. if i may right. sure so uh if you're asking if uh you know i think that you know a repaving full with uh, repave uh if utility work is being done is necessary uh i guess it all depend on the age of the existing asphalt so if the roadway were less than five years old typically the uh Typically, the standard would be to uh, possibly mill and overlay. Cut back on the cut back on the trench by a foot on either side would be the standard, and then uh, mill and overlay the existing. If it were, if uh, it were an older section of road that uh, needed full depth reconstruction, then possibly uh, you know pulverizing it, doing a full width, full width pave. Uh, may be the better option there are and again uh if if the uh paving were new enough and it were possible to infrared or something like that so it wouldn't it wouldn't always be the uh the case that you would that you would do a, a full width reconstruction of the uh, uh the roadway and mr chairman as we get closer to the time when we would actually want to try and amend the uh subdivision mm -hmm. regulations we could also ask for input you anticipate my court, my Re thoughts regarding so exactly we could put yeah. a stipulation i would have to roads so so I, I think there's several things to just to clarify there's several things that come into play would be the age of the roadway the existing roadway and then um, also the the uh, type of i think we would be remiss if we didn't try to avail ourselves of the expertise of mr murray mr murray as you can see here i have something called appendix a engineering details which is part of the subdivision rules and regulations of the town of Dudley. Yep. Uh, I confess that the copy that I have, which is a copy that is multi-generational, that's a kind way of putting it, is almost illegible. I, and something that I had observed when in, in reviewing that. So. All right. uh, I would ask, if you would, if you could, to take a look at this, if, you, if possible, and provide us with what you think is a recommended course of action in terms of some of the things that we can't even read right now. Certainly. And uh, I think that would help to keep us on the straight and narrow going forward and current as well. In, in essence, I think a lot of it's already there, but as you said, it's uh, pretty much illegible. Right, and uh, there may be some need to, to change some of the verbiage, <coughs> and I, I don't, I can't even determine from what I see here as to what the dating is on that. So I suspect it's, it's uh, more than a few years old. Uh, 
I guess I would like to see that we resolve the, what I think was the initial issue, which was regards to the painting. Mm -hmm. We have obviously a recommendation from Mr. Murray that is somewhat at odds with what we had from Mr. Perrin, who was the previous board member, who was very knowledgeable in terms of uh, the industry. Uh, and I think we gave credence to that when he presented it. Uh, is there any further discussion on that issue? Well, Mr. Chairman, I, I'm, I'm thinking uh, I'd like to probably make a motion where we, I don't know if rescind is the proper language. Basically, I'm now of the mindset that maybe we did overstep our bounds back in that initial meeting where we stipulated super pave. Is, okay, you said probably make a motion. Is, did I, well, did you I've want got, to omit I've, the word probably and make I'm, the motion? Well, I, I, I need to have the town planner's input on how I want to word this. Okay. I, I don't want to get into trouble. Mr. Well, I, I think Stanley, we need the wordsmith. <laughs> We're talking a minor modification of the decision, and I think we want to uh, stay with the two and a half inch binder, so we don't need to modify that. Okay. But we do want to modify the requirement for super pave to uh, hot mix asphalt. All right. Hold on a second. Is that the proper? Mm -hmm. uh, I believe uh, Ashley would be a, a type I is the. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Could I just say conventional asphalt? Conventional asphalt, correct. Could I ask um, through sure. the chair, how come all the, a lot of um, other towns, from what I'm told, are taking on the super pave as a requirement? Again, for a, uh, for a In road? subdivisions, <laughs> in subdivisions. Okay, so. Uh, I don't know that's ne that that's necessarily the case, but uh, with a uh, new construction, if you were to do a uh, a complete uh, full depth reconstruction of a roadway, that may be the case because uh, it's turning towards where the mass DOT is. That's what they're that's what they will reimburse for. Or that's what they're moving towards for reimbursement, not necessarily for uh, construction of uh, new subdivision. Mm -hmm. So there, there may be, and don't get me wrong, there may be some municipalities that are moving towards that or have made moves to uh, make that their standard, but um, not, I, I don't believe it would be in every case. And the other thing through that, if, if I can, just while I, uh, Mr. Chairman, through you, um, I think one of the things that you have to keep in mind is, you know, there are a set of standards that are there and the board is uh, charged with making sure that they assist developers or um, anybody that com comes in before them to comply with the existing regs, not create new ones uh, while through, mm -hmm. the, through the course of doing that. So, um, you know, certainly you can ask somebody if they, if they would like to uh, comply with a request, but I don't know that they can nece necessarily be held to that standard unless it actually already exists in the regulations. Mr. Wachov has been writing feverishly over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anticipate we're going to get him. I was waiting for him to finish just so I could ask, what's the uh, thickness of the top coat? Well, the, the uh, top cost would be inch and a half. Inch and a half, so we're talking two, two and, and a half. half. So it would be a total binder. of four, it would still re remain at a total of four inches. Okay, right, two and a half inch binder coat and an inch and a half uh, top coat, correct? That's what we're, that's what we're going for, conventional yes. asphalt. Okay. Can I speak to the chair? Sure. I did. I did speak with Mass Probe and Stone as far as you know where Lou was. Obviously, working prior, and they they agree with the hot mix is a much better base as as Jeff had stated. Um, I spoke with a couple other different companies as far as that in that type of environment. Mm -hmm. They said that the hot mix and Jeff Walsh, the town engineer, also felt more comfortable. Um, you know, he's, he wants to. He's like, you know, whatever the town agrees on, but I did talk to him. I did call him. I've been in touch with him, letting him know. Mm -hmm. You know, just because I saw, told the board last week that, if, you know, we delayed the paving today and moved it to tomorrow so I could speak to the board and come in with Jeff, like I had said. Um, just to make, I want everything, everybody on the same page. But it was recommended that a hot mix, kind of the general consensus, is a much better pavement. 
put down. Uh, if I may, I, I think what I'm hearing or understand from what Mr. Murray has said that the hot mix or what the non super paid, if you will, is preferred when there is construction ongoing. Yeah. And I think we all know as members of the board that uh, our subdivisions in Dudley go <laughs> on infinitum. I mean, we don't measure them in years. We're talking decades in many Perpetuity. cases of these things. <laughs> Perpetuity, that's, that's a good word. word for it. So, you know, something that is going to be able to bear load for a number of years sounds like a better thought right now in my mind. Yeah, so you're right. It, it would seem like the, uh, the housing market's pretty volatile in Dudley. So for whatever reason, uh, that's been the case, and it seems like subdivisions have had... Uh, They've been dragged out before they've... Uh, they have had a history with a capital H. The only question I, I want to ask while well, uh, Jeff is here, as far as uh, when you go, and I had suggested this last week, when you go over a two-inch uh, conventional paving, you usually jump up to a three-quarter inch stone. If you go two-inch, like the town regs are two-inch, two and two, and it's always been half-inch, um, which mm -hmm. is a tighter mix. On the on the on the am I correct on that right? It's a, a half inch stone, tighter mix on the asphalt, and we do the three eighths top, which is nice. It's just so if you do two and two, you get a smaller stone in the base, which is more. Um, uh, it's it, I guess it's a smaller stone when you put bigger stones in. It's more um, pervious to water or so anything going in. That yeah. was the only question that Jeff and I had discussed as far as whether you go to the two and that's over a two inch base. You go up to a little bit bigger stone. So that's. Typically, that's more with a, uh, a super paved product. They're, they're, they're monitoring the thickness and aggregate size because of, like I explained before, and, I, and honestly, I don't know exactly all the, the formulas that they use when they, when they do that, but they're actually they're, they're matching the thickness of the pavement to the size of the aggregate that they're using because they're, while they're, you know, it's, it's even a different type. It's an orbital, orbital type uh, roller that they're using, and they're actually fracturing fracturing the stone so to to, mm -hmm. to make that happen or get get the type of action that they're looking for they're using a particular size of aggregate so I don't know that that's necessarily uh, the same case with with a conventional type of asphalt mix so uh, you know, the, the three-quarter stone or or a half inch modified uh, would, would be desirable as well for the two and a half inch base Mr. Latrova Oh, uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. I would like to make a motion that we make a minor modification to Lions Estate subdivision, uh, and we strike the requirement for super pave, mm -hmm. and instead require a conventional asphalt product with a two and a half inch binder and a one and a half inch top coat. Before we go further with a second on that, I'd like to ask the gentleman, uh, I know Mr. Watroba took very careful notes, but does that square with the direction we seem to be getting, where did you guys were going? Sure. That yeah, is, okay, absolutely. just just for consistency's sake, that's all. I wasn't trying to second guess you in any way. No problem. All right, motion made, is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded, any discussion? And a vote, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you both. And I would, if you can, Mr. Murray, at some point, I know you're recently new to the job, and I'm sure there are things coming at you left and right, and as you know, we're getting oh, close no, to coming. you got plenty of time. <laughs> well, Appendix A is exciting reading, if you can, if you so can get through third, it. This is the third meeting this week, uh, third night I've been to. Oh, the meeting, okay. So. Well, there's no need for you to go <laughs> home. You can just stay the night, I guess. Uh, All right. Yeah, Thank I you. I will take a look at those and uh, see what I can do to assist with that. All right. We'd okay. appreciate that, okay. I think. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, gentlemen. Thanks, Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. Awesome. I see next meeting, uh, uh, next order of business is the uh, next meeting date, which I think we've already mentioned in conversation as being the 12th of May. Yes. 7 o'clock. Big room, little room. Michelle, will the cameras be ready in the big room next week? Oh, I hope so. So, we'll no. Right. No. 
probably made in China. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so, so oh third floor. Location to be determined, but uh, on the third floor in any event. For Just anybody who's as you recall, we do have a continuation of the public hearing for yes. Butler's Way Definitive Plan. But I'm expecting a letter of withdrawal um, before then. Okay, do we need to designate a time for that? Uh, we already did. 7 it's a continuation at 7.15. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, so people that are listening, um, we're not sure whether that will continue or not, but right. it's still on the agenda and it may go forward. Okay, good point, thank you. Uh, next on our agenda, it, well, first of all, anybody, any questions or concerns with regards to that May 12th date? No, okay. And other town notices. Bill, is there anything nope. else that we should be aware of? Well, Michelle? Yeah. We did get a notice from the town administrator today saying that the town hall will be reopening May 24th full time. Full time? Yes. Oh. Not so. Thursday evening, though. I'm sorry? We're not holding Thursday evening or hours, but Monday through Friday, 8 to 4 30. Monday through Thursday, 8 to 4 30, and then Friday, 8 to 1. Oh, okay. I know it's getting ahead of things, but is there any thought given to? I know some people were displaced at, uh, during the pandemic. Is there any chance that uh, any of that might be addressed going forward or getting close to going forward? It's not in the budget, I know that. No, okay. All right. <laughs> Enough said. Uh, other correspondence? No. No? Oh, we usually have a moment here for a planner's uh, plate. I figured this was a special meeting, so I just wanted to keep it, keep it short. Okay. Well, I see, unless anyone has uh, other thoughts uh, or wants the floor, uh, our next order of business is being adjourned. Uh, again, does anyone have any thoughts or comments they care to make? Uh, all I would say is I wish Mr. Edmondson good health, uh, and I uh, hope to see him back with us soon. Okay. On the 12th. On the, on, on, the, on the 12th. On the 12th, <laughs> no later than that. All right. Uh, if it's uh, the board's wish, we could uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. To make a motion, we adjourn. Motion made. Second. Seconded. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Don't need to ask for a post. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs>